Good evening, everyone. We're glad you've joined us. I'm Kelly Ogle. And I'm Jennifer Reynolds. April 19th, 1995. The date marks the worst U.S. terrorist attack in history, the bombing of the Alfred P. Murrah Building in downtown Oklahoma City. The explosion shook central Oklahoma, killed nearly 170 people, and injured more than 400 others. And it forever altered our sense of security and innocence. On this Memorial Day, a day to remember our dead, Newsline 9 dedicates the next hour to the bombing victims, their families, and to the heroes involved in the rescue. This special report begins shortly after 9 a.m., April 19, 1995. This is a Newsline 9 Memorial Day special, Terror Hits Home. The side of the federal building has been blown off. Holy cow. Tremendous blast came through the, the windows, blew us out of our chairs onto the floor. 24 acres, we're 97. We got damage and uh, injuries all up and down Broadway. I thank the Lord that I wasn't sitting at my desk at that time because that portion of the bill, uh, uh, that portion of the building is gone. Get every available get fire everybody. They are bringing people out that are just covered in blood. Uh, ambulance crews have been arriving for the last 10 minutes and they are going into the building. The whole back of the building just fell in on us. This week we have got a lot of children right over here at the YMCA also. What's happening? You know, it, it, it was like it happened in slow motion. All around us there are dazed uh, people, some with uh, with blood, uh, some of the shirts are hanging off of them, glass debris everywhere, fires burning in the parking lot. The uh, police and uh, emergency crews are talking about moving us back because of the danger of a possibility of another explosion. The devastation at the Alfred P. Murrah Federal Building uh, appears to be uh, almost uh, total. Don't know what happened, just a blast. Uh, just a tremendous explosion. The ceiling and the windows came in. The death and boom. I was falling, then I hit, and I was dazed for a, a minute, a, a few a seconds, and I realized there had to be an explosion or something. We got them trapped all the way on the seventh floor. They're tying sheets together now, trying to climb down the sheets on the seventh floor. My, my entire staff of about seven people is gone. Gone. Debris everywhere down here, smoke billowing into the air. The uh, large church at the corner of Fourth and Harvey, all the stained glass windows have been blown out of the east side of the building. Again, it is just, it is chaos down here. The advisor fire department in the basement of the federal building, there's a children's center, and we need to get the fire department officials up here as quick as we can. Can you tell me your name? Can you tell me your name? Is there someone there? My daughter's one, and she's in there. Adam, 38, are you on the north side of the federal building with people buried? I'm on the east side of the federal building. It's flat. You went to the nursery? Yeah, we were, we were pulling. Well, we pulled five little kids out and a couple of little, couple of ladies. And All we can do is just be of as much assistance as we can to those who are injured and uh, try to get them to some medical care. You're doing a great job. We all, all of us in Oklahoma City, thank you for what you've done today. Well, thank you. And what many other people like him are doing. The devastation again in downtown Oklahoma City is absolutely incredible. The Alfred Murrah building is almost gone completely. Half of it has collapsed. Numerous injuries all over town. 
uh, adults, children. There's glass everywhere. Virtually every building in downtown Oklahoma City appears to have been damaged in some way. Let's move out. I've got two down in the 100 block at Northwest 6 and the uh, Sunset Avenue Hotel. It's just a shuttle of ambulances, one after another, bringing in victims. We have the latest information now. 60 adults have been brought in. There, you're looking at video now that uh, we just brought back here. All right, here be to careful. If you, let's just warn them now, Cynthia, that this is raw tape that we shot at the hospital, and, and we have not censored this in any way, so you may see some graphic stuff. Yeah, they're pretty much the victims have uh, broken bones, uh, cuts and bruises and burns. Uh, 60 adults are being taken care of now at University Hospital. At Children's Hospital, there are 10 children and 5 adults at that facility. They range in fair to critical condition. And a sad note here, uh, the ages are from 2 months mm. to 18 years old at Children's Hospital. They just told us that they had found 80 people and only 2 were alive. And they told us all to go home. It's co called Condition Black. And we have, you know, 30 or 40 uh, different uh, hospital personnel who are standing outside of the emergency room waiting for the ambulances to come up and, and they've got their teams ready and they take the people and they get in and they get them treated. I'm there bringing out bodies of many people and it's awful hard on the officers and everybody that's had to bring the bodies out and the people that are tagging and just in general everybody. It's like a war zone down there. <laughs> But you've seen the pictures from the Murrah building. Uh, it would be a miracle of biblical proportion that uh, anyone, that someone did not die inside that building. Uh, my feeling is that many people did. Uh, and many people uh, also are in uh, a very critical condition uh, out here on the streets of uh, Oklahoma City. Let's move these people to the middle of the street because we've got glass fixing to follow us from behind, okay? Ocean 2 headquarters, there is people trapped on this in this situation on like 6-4. You're on the fifth floor, right on the end. The only, I can walk from here, from my office to the door where I normally enter and there's nothing there anymore. It's just, it's from me to these individuals that the building's gone. It's just astonishing to me that uh, an evil human being would do this to children and other innocent people. It's just absolutely astonishing, especially here in the middle of middle America. That's the thing that's going through my mind right now. This is something that happens somewhere else. This is something that happens in places like Beirut, uh, places far, far away, places with strange sounding names. It's not something that's supposed to happen in places like Oklahoma City. It's not something that's supposed to happen at home. This is just a, this few, is moments just a few moments ago. There are people running uh, north away from the federal building. You see them uh, waving people off saying, get away from the building. Another bomb, move back. There are dogs in there. Get him back! Get him back! Just when we were trying to carry the people out, and they hollered bomb, and we can't leave. The, we had a lady in there that was still alive, but we didn't want to leave her because, you know, and they were yelling at us to come on and get out of there, but we, you, you, when you got a live person, it doesn't make no difference, you know. It doesn't make any difference. If, if you got a live person in there, you try to stay with them, you know, and uh, the, the worst part was having to leave her, and then, but we did get, go back and get her, and she is alive, and she's on our way to one of the hospitals. I, all I can tell you, man. Our rescue crews now are back in. Uh, we've got uh, people we're talking to through the floors. 
the debris you see laying out in the streets that's in piles and stuff, it's exactly like that in the buildings. It's dark, it's dusty, there's bodies, there's chaos everywhere. From the explosion, from the way that the explosion had gone up the building and also out, it looks like it may have been in a vehicle parked in front of the building. Now, of course, they won't know that for some time. You, you, you wonder how, how somebody could be so heartless as I mean, you're, you're talking not only human lives, but adult lives, but you're talking about children. Nobody, they had, there was no compassion for anybody. And, uh, you know, this is just a cold-blooded killing. We have at this time no assumptions with regard to who caused this particular bombing. And we have had hundreds, if not thousands, of leads. It is the, as far as I know, the most serious uh, attack on civilians in the American uh, history. But it's going to be a long, tedious task. We'll be here for days doing this. You know, this rescue ever is probably going to take uh, three or four days at least, so uh, around the clock. Uh, we'll not stop tonight. We've got lights and generators and everything coming in, and, and uh, we've got uh, every Oklahoma City fire unit in town is down here. We've got off-duty people deployed throughout the stations. Metro area departments are down, and uh, uh, good cooperation through all the emergency service agencies. The building is now illuminated. They've got spotlights on the building. There is a large crane in front of it. This is all part of the search efforts. They are not giving up efforts tonight. They are not giving up hope. I just spoke with one of the rescue workers who has just come out of the federal building. He says that there is one woman who is in the basement. She's pinned in there and they can hear her. They can talk to her. The wind has picked up out here and it is pouring down rain. The wind is blowing and there you can see various things falling off the building. As we said just moments ago, people, there you can see chunks of it, huge chunks flying away. Finally, let me say that I ask all Americans tonight to pray, to pray for the people who have lost their lives to pray for the families and the friends of the dead and the wounded, to pray for the people of Oklahoma City. May God's grace be with them. Meanwhile, we will be about our work.